If you have leverage in a car deal right now, it's on your trade-in. The issue is the dealership makes money on the trade-in when they steal it from you. Let, let, all right, let's just, by the title of the video, the thumbnail, someone knows. How does the dealership determine the true value of your trade-in? We'll break it down. We'll explain how you can get the most for it, all that fun stuff. How's that sound? Okay. All right, let's start with how do they actually come up with the values that you get when you go into to trade-in? <sighs> well... <laughs> <laughs> Why can't this just be a straightforward answer? Because it's not. Because it's be the car business. Because it's the car business and you're dealing with used car managers. And, and as much as we'd like to say that coming up with a number, it's an objective thing, it's not. It's subjective. Every used car manager can look at a car slightly differently. And depending upon the product, the brand, and depending upon the location can determine how enthralled a used car manager could be with your trade-in, uh, or depending upon how people have said, gee, I'm really looking for X, you guys don't have it, but if you trade it, let me know, and then you walk in and you're trading in X, well, that used car manager might think more highly of your vehicle sure. because of that. Basically, what happens is that a, a pre-owned manager should go out and touch the car, drive the car, mm -hmm. um, inspect the vehicle for obvious paint work or body damage, uh, tire tread depth, drive the vehicle, feel how it's shifting, making sure that the brakes work, making sure the power windows go, I don't know, up and down. If there's a sunroof, opening the cover and looking and making sure, A, that the sunroof's not cracked. I've seen that. Yep. Um, hit the button and make sure it opens. Yeah. Okay, so they have to check all these things out. And then there's guides that they use, Kelly Blue Book, Black Book, uh, NADA, but primarily they use online tools such as Vauto, which has all these books uh, available right in this app, plus the Mannheim Market Report. So it gives you a rather current or relatively current up-to-date market conditions based on what's going on at the auctions. And they can see, like, if they wanted to end up just taking the car to the auction, what they could get for it. Sure. And then after they have all that information and they know what the real value of the car is, they try and steal it. <laughs> if you're like me and you need to know about EVs, tune into our new show on YAA Electric, plugged in Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And I want to break this down a little bit. Okay. Because you mentioned they use KBB. Yes, sometimes. You mentioned they use Blackbook. You yes, they use, oftentimes. Um, uh, NADA. NADA. Yeah. So these are all different valuation companies yeah. out there. Some of them are consumer-facing. Yes. Like you can get a Blackbook value, you can get a KBB yeah. value. I don't think you – I mean, you probably can find a place to get your NADA value. Oh, yeah. You can go to NADA.com. Then the dealership, obviously, the used car manager also uses the, the, the Mannheim Market Report. Got yes. It. So they just aggregate all this different information, yes. different people's estimates for what the yes. car is. They don't, they don't do it like what, what we preach to people, which is like go to Carvana and see what it's worth and things no. like that. No, 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 they don't. Now, because that would probably jack up the price that they have to pay well, for sure. it. Well, yeah. sure, you know, and and usually if if a used car manager is confronted with the fact that uh, the the person trading in the car has already been to Carvana or CarMax, and they pull out their appraisal from CarMax, uh, the used car manager usually goes, well, we'll beat it by 100 bucks." You know, meanwhile, he might have been $5,000 <laughs> below it to start with, you know, but he'll jump up that to 50, you know, an extra 5,100 hours to get his hands on the car. Even though they know or they have an idea what the, what the subjective value of that vehicle is to them, their offer to the customer is always going to be well below that. And I don't want to say because used car managers just like to steal everything, but, but the, you know, the it's truth— how, It's how they make money. It, the truth of the matter is, you know, on, on anything, you, you make money at, at the wholesale level based on what you're paying for at wholesale. If you're paying retail for it at the wholesale level, then how you making money when you sell it at the retail price that you just paid for it. So, you know, a used car manager is tasked with figuring out a way to buy everything that they can at— at wholesale or less than wholesale so that they can recondition it and then sell it for retail. I used to always think to myself, when I would appraise a car and I would defend my appraisal to the customer, how I could say to the customer, 
you know, based on book values, based on what's going on at the auctions, it's barely worth fifteen thousand dollars. And they go, yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. So, so we trade it for the fifteen thousand dollars, and then we'd spend fifteen hundred to recondition it and everything else. So when everything was said and done, say we owned it for seventeen thousand dollars, and then I could sit there and I could justify to somebody looking to buy it how this vehicle that was barely worth fifteen thousand dollars two days ago is suddenly worth twenty one thousand dollars <laughs> today, and how could that be? I used to always think that to myself. <laughs> and, and, and I used to always think to myself, how do people fall for this every time? All right. So one of the things that, that I'm really proud that we built yes. is the YAA valuation. Yes. Group. And it is not a trade-in value. It is a retail fair value. So like yes. what you could expect to see the vehicle. So you can use it in two ways. You can plug in a vehicle you're thinking of trading in and selling and see, okay, what is the dealership going to ultimately end up listing this for? Yes. And then you can use that as your as another place, place of ref, reference um, as you go and negotiate your trade-in. Also, if you're buying a used car, plug the VIN into our valuation and see if it's a fair offer, yes, or a fair advertised price. We see it with the black book numbers too. You, yes. get, you can get the access to what your private party sale value is, your trade-in value, yes. and, the, and the retail value. Yes. The retail value. And there's just, always a huge spread. Always. Always. Yes. And it's just the profit for the, for the for the dealership. Yes. But that's the process that they go through. They're going to yes. do an inspection. They're going to look at book values. They're going to under – they're going to lowball you. You're going to come in with your, your actual hard numbers, your quotes from CarMax Carvana. And you're, you're going to have try your knowledge. And, and you're going to try and get them as close to that as you can. Now, in some states, yes. most states actually, yes. you get a sales tax basis benefit. I think there's six or seven, and we'll put it up on the screen, that don't offer yes. a sales tax basis benefit. Can you explain briefly what that means and why there might be instances where a dealer offers you less for your trade-in, but you're going to take that because yes. it nets out more? Let's say the new car you're buying is $30,000 and your trade is Wait worth- a second. Wait, a new car for $30,000? Well, it could be a new used car. Who no, knows? I'm just, <laughs> just a car. The car is $30,000. Did you know and, new car prices are and, going up? And your trade-in is worth ten. Yeah. Okay. So in most states, you're only going to pay the sales tax on the $20,000 difference. And and let's say, as we are in the state of Maryland, um, the sales tax is 6%. So if you have your car's worth $10,000, realistically, it's worth ten six because it saved you $600 in tax. In, in tax. Now, let, let's say, let's say um, that Carvana said they'd give you $10,000 for it. And the dealer will only give you 9800 And you're thinking, well, I want that other 200 Well, guess what? If you trade it in even at 9800 you're picking up, what, a $588 tax savings. How did you do that math in your head like that? It was $6 for every 100 uh, <laughs> I want to be like you someday. <laughs> it's, uh, it was relatively easy. <laughs> um, so there's a $588 tax savings. Yeah. So if you took the 98 it, it's equivalent to getting ten thousand three hundred and eighty-eight dollars. Get it for the again? Fee. Yeah, well, it's car math, buddy. <laughs> I'm real good at car math. So there's an instance where your trade offer is less than what you might have been able to get somewhere else, but by trading it in, you actually end up saving money because yeah. you're saving on the taxes. All right, thank you for explaining that. It makes a lot of sense now that yes. you've explained it. That is how dealerships come up with their trade-in offers. That's what you can do to protect yourself and honestly just come in and negotiate with that. Yeah. And that's yes. a little bit of like an extra extra dose of knowledge so that you don't make a mistake and leave money on the table as you do. Go navigate your trade-in slash just selling your car process. Yes. Well done, Pops. Well, I'm trying, buddy. I'm learning. <laughs>